I'd like to cover a question with you that's been on the minds of so many of the students that are right in the middle of our course. We're doing the Exploring Revelation course, 20 sessions going through the Bible, the last book of the Bible, the book of Revelation. Here's a question. I'm going to put it on the slide in front of you, and it's this. Does Revelation explain if the mark of the beast could be a vaccine? So look at what's important here. Does Revelation explain if the mark of the beast could be a vaccine, like in the COVID-19 vaccine? So where would we look in the Bible? Well, right here you see it's in the book of Revelation, chapter 13 and verse 16, right there. So let me ask you, as we cover this very, very interesting question, when you face anything in the news, online, reading a book, any book, including even the scriptures. How do you know how to understand the scriptures? That's what we're going to cover. It's called the, the letting scriptures explain the scripture. In other words, what else does the Bible say about either the portion of scripture we're studying or a question like the one we're looking at? Does Revelation explain if the mark of the beast could possibly be a COVID vaccine. So look on the board here. Does Revelation explain if the mark of the beast could be a vaccine as in the COVID-19 vaccine? That's what we're going to focus on. We're going to look at the context of the book of Revelation, which Jesus introduces Revelation. Jesus introduces this in the first verse. Remember, we're going all the way through in our course, and I'm only doing a Q&A, but in the first verse of Revelation, it's the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants. That's us, born-again Christians. The context is Jesus is talking about the end of the world. And he talks about it in Matthew 24, Mark 13. And he says, basically, the end of the world is characterized by three huge kind of crescendo growing events. Number one. Global deception. Now, Jesus said there's always been deception, but it's going, to get, it's going to get much greater. Diseases. Now, that brings us to COVID-19 and the vaccine. And disasters. What we're going to do as we cover this question, we're going to cover it in seven parts, one at a time. Number one, we're going to look at who is the beast. Now, you say, what do you mean by who is the beast? Well, look at the question. Does Revelation explain if the mark of the beast, you see, the, the way to understand is to let the Bible define what we're talking about. So who is the beast? Number one, what's the mark of the beast? What, what does the Bible say that mark is? How is that mark used? And that's actually a two part uh, question. Number one, what would the first century Christians Remember, they're the primary audience. The very first group that got the scripture is the ones that God was trying to have understand what he was talking about. So the more we understand what they understood, the more we understand what he was talking about, what he meant. So how is it used back then? And how is it used in Revelation? Then here, look at number five. Can you get marked by the beast and not know it? Now, that's a great question. Because people are saying that the COVID-19 vaccination might be the mark of the beast. And if someone unwittingly or unknowingly takes that vaccine, they're going to have the mark of the beast. Could that possibly happen? That's the fifth element we're going to study today. And then, is the mark of the beast an unpardonable sin? And many... People, that's why they don't want to get the vaccine. If there's even a remote possibility that the mark of the beast is, is anything near the unpardonable sin, they don't want to be involved with that. And then finally, how can you avoid the mark? Okay? Now, this whole discussion, as we go into the scriptures in just a minute, keeps going back and forth between two different understandings we have to have in order to make it all fit. Number one, What's the difference between Antichrist, like 1 John 2 talks about, 
It says that for many antichrists have entered in the world, and anyone that doesn't confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is an antichrist. We call that, look at this, a small letter antichrist, as opposed to the, see the capital letter, the antichrist in the Bible is a person. The antichrist are those that subscribe, all the people that subscribe to Satan's lie. So this is a group, notice it's plural, antichrists, and this is a person. So you can talk about the world having the spirit of the Antichrist. In other words, that the whole world uh, does not believe that Jesus Christ is who he said in the scriptures that he truly is, the divine incarnate Son of God. So, keep in mind the difference between Antichrist, and I'll talk about this all the way through the Q&A, Q the Antichrist, the person that's described, by the way, in Revelation 13 and many other places. But this coming person who is also the beast. Okay? And so we're going to cover this as we go through these questions. So, uh, looking at your slides, the next slide is, uh, let me get to it. Here we go. The question is, does God say whether or not the vaccine could be the mark of the beast? Yes. God says the COVID vaccine is not the mark of the beast. Now think with me, look at the next slide. We are getting both rounds, my wife and I, by the way, my, this, this entire session, this Q&A is being filmed by my wonderful wife. Both of us who are full-time missionaries are getting both rounds of the vaccine so that we can continue our missionary travel. Now you ask this, look at the next slide. How did you come to such a clear conclusion? Simple, the same way all of us should, by studying God's Word. Look, no matter what you read in the news, no matter what you hear on television, no matter what network you're watching, in fact, I would suggest you watch more than one network, but wherever you're getting your news, you need to come to a conclusion by studying God's Word. Okay, next slide. Here's a quick summary of our Exploring Revelation course. And what I'm going to show you are the seven elements we're going to look at. The key to interpretation of the Bible is context. See that first line? The only way that you can understand the Bible is to understand context. Now, look up for just a second from, from your slides, because I want to show you something. Our goal is not that you have to constantly every day watch or read a book, watch a video to get an understanding of all of your questions. Our goal is to teach you the tools for you to properly understand and apply, interpret and imply the scriptures. Now, I am a Bible teacher. Uh, my wonderful wife, uh, has taught women all over the world. And I have taught students and in churches and in Bible colleges and in seminaries. I am a teacher, but the greatest teacher of all is the Holy Spirit. And He wants you to be able to understand and interpret the Scripture. He wants you to have the holy boldness and confidence that you know what God has said. In fact, I, my prayer right now for this course is that through what we're teaching you right now, that you come to the point where you can confidently say, I know what God has said on that topic, on that subject, on that doctrine, on that issue. Now, we should be humble in, in every way. And so we can't say we know everything. And if someone comes to me with a scripture maybe I haven't considered, or with uh, a doctrinal implication that I hadn't fully thought through, I will say, I would love to understand more about that. Let's talk. But you should be able to, by reading the Bible and looking at the context. Now back to the slide. The key to interpretation of any portion of Scripture is context. So here, 
to interpret what the Bible says about COVID-19, the mark of the beast, and all that, number one, we have to understand who is the Antichrist and how does he fit in the scriptures, okay? Number two, where is the mark of the beast in the Bible? Number three, how did the early church understand the 666 mark? That's the most important question. Not what do we think it is, a vaccine or a barcode or, you know, some World Health Organization. No. How did the early church understand when God told them about the 666 mark? Number four, how does the Antichrist use the 666 mark? Number five, can someone be marked and not know it, like with a vaccine? That's really a crucial question. Number six, can anyone be forgiven, notice that, after taking the mark and get saved during the tribulation? Or is the mark, and here's the key word there, the unpardonable sin. And then the final conclusion is, Loving the truth is the only security against the mark. And by the way, loving the truth is the way the Bible describes a born-again Christian. Next slide, and we're going to jump into this. All end-of-the-world trends have three characteristics. Greater frequency, greater intensity, greater visibility. Now look up from your slides and let me show you something. Jesus talks, and, and take your Bibles with me, grab your Bible, Look in Matthew 24, I'm turning there with you, Matthew 24 and verse 8. Now remember, Matthew 24, 8 says the same thing Mark 13, 8 says. And what Jesus says in Matthew 24, 8 is, all these things are the beginning of sorrows. The word in the scripture, uh, sorrows, is the Greek word odin, O-D-I-N, which basically means birth pangs or labor, as in having a baby. And so Jesus said all of these things. Now look in your Bibles, what, what, all what things? And Jesus answered verse 4 and said, Take heed that no one deceives you. Look at deceptions right here on the board. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. And don't be troubled, for these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines... These are disasters, famines, pestilences, those are diseases, and earthquakes in various places, that's more disasters. But look at verse 8, all of these, all of these deceptions, all of these disasters, and all of these diseases, look what it says in verse 8, are the beginning of sorrows. All end-of-the-world trends have three characteristics. Jesus said, remember, he said this in Matthew 24, Matthew 24, and verse 8. Jesus said in Matthew 24 and in Mark 13, in verse 8, he said, all end of the world have three characteristics. He called them sorrows or birth pangs. Remember, the Greek word is odin, which means the, the pain of childbirth. They would be greater in frequency, more and more of them, stronger, greater in intensity, and they would become inescapable, getting everybody's attention. So greater frequency, greater intensity, greater visibility. Now look up at, at the board here. Matthew 24, Mark 13. Greek word Odin, birth pangs. They get stronger, they get closer, they're inescapable. What are going to be these birth pang events? Look in your Bible with me. Matthew 24. And what Jesus said, starting in verse 4, Take heed, no one deceives you. He said there's going to be stronger, closer, and inescapable deception. For many will come in my name, saying, I'm the Christ, and will deceive many. And then, disasters are going to be stronger, closer, and inescapable. What kind of disasters? Wars, rumors of wars. He says in verse 6, Don't be troubled, for these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Remember, birth pangs are pointing toward a crescendo, kind of a gigantic, huge bang at the end. That's what the tribulation is. But 
before the bang at the end, there are going to be these stronger, closer, inescapable reminders. What's another? Look at verse 7. Nation will rise against nation. By the way, that's interesting in Greek. Ethne will rise against ethne. There's going to be ethnic conflicts that get stronger, that get closer together, and they get inescapable. All the different smaller ethnic groups in the world are going to be fighting against each other and against those that are oppressing them. But then it says, and there will be famines, that's a disaster, and pestilences, diseases. Now pause for just a minute. What do I think about COVID-19? Let, let me just talk to you about COVID, okay? Do you know what the Bible says? COVID is just the beginning of stronger and stronger and stronger diseases that are going to plague the whole world and closer together. If you look at history, we've had big epidemics and big pandemics and big plagues, you know, the Black Death and the Spanish flu and now COVID and before that SARS and before that the swine flu and all the other things. Do you know what the Bible says? The closer we get to the end, it's going to be stronger Diseases, disasters, deceptions. Now, now, disasters, that's like fires and quakes and solar flares, okay? And deception is going to be this kind of world peace and world religions. Now, we all know what, what diseases, you know. We, we have... Um, Ebola, uh, we have the COVID, uh, before that, you know, the, the whole influenza of the Spanish flu. But what I'm saying is, God says, the way you know you're getting near the end, Jesus said, birth pangs, greater intensity, greater frequency, and greater visibility. It's going to be inescapable. It's going to be on everybody's mind. People are going to be saying, oh no, by the way, we have so many variants of COVID now. Today, in January 14th, you know what the, the World Health and CDC said? They're working on the vaccine. I mean, this is January of 2021. They're working on the vaccine and they said, COVID is endemic. You know what that means? It's going to be with us forever, they said. It's never going away. It's going to become like headaches and common colds. It's just going to always be here. Do you know what the Bible says? Hmm? We're going to get a COVID-19 vaccine for this endemic problem. And then we're going to have another disease that's stronger. And it's going to come quicker than every 10, 40, 50, 100 years, 500 years. They're going to be truncated, getting closer and closer, stronger and stronger, and they're going to be inescapable. See, that's what the Jesus gives this picture of a woman getting closer and closer to the birth of a child that she can't escape and that is just gripping her attention, her body, and filling her with pain. And that's what the world is going to go through, birth pangs. And what are they going to be? Take your Bible. Look, look at what they're going to be. They're going to be verse 7 of Matthew 24. Nations rising against nations. We have so many conflicts going on in the world right now. It's going to be kingdoms against kingdoms, the big powerful ones. And there are going to be famines. There are going to be pestilences, these diseases. And earthquakes in various places. Back at the slides, all end of the world trends have three characteristics. Greater frequency, greater intensity, greater visibility. Now, look at the trend of global pandemics. By the way, there are 10 trends in the Bible. Jesus said, nation will rise against nation. I just read that. Kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines and, there it is, pestilences and earthquakes in various places. There's COVID-19, and that brings us to the first question. Who or what is? is the Antichrist. Now, remember where we are. We're in Exploring Revelation. Uh, you're just joining in. If you're not in the course, you just found this on YouTube. This is a regular course. It's a 
session course going through the whole book of Revelation. And so many of my students have been sending me messages uh, on both YouTube and on Facebook and emails. And they've said, what about the COVID-19 vaccine? Does it have anything to do with the mark of the beast? That's the question. And I remember I'm answering it. I've already answered it and I'm answering it again. No, it's not the mark of the beast, but it does have something to do with the Antichrist. Here's what it has to do. Open in your Bible to 1 John chapter 2 and verse 18. 1 John chapter 2. And I'm going to go there too. It's just for Revelation. So if you're in Revelation, back up. But 1 John 2, and then look on the slide. 1 John 2, 18, 2, 22, and then we're going to look at 2 Thessalonians 2, 3. So let's start right here in these two verses, and you just listen as I read these to you. Verse 18, little children, is the last hour, and you have heard that the Antichrist is coming. Even now, look at this, Many antichrists have come, by which we know it's the last hour. Verse 22. Who is a liar but he who denies Jesus is the Christ? He is antichrist who denies father and son. Now pause from the slide and look up for a second. Remember I told you we need to go through the difference between antichrist, small letter, these, this is a group of people. This is basically the world's philosophy and the Antichrist. The person who is the beast in the Antichrist, okay? Now, to, to get this, let me show you something that we're going to see in Revelation 13, okay? Revelation 13, where we're, we're looking at the Antichrist. See right here, Revelation 13, the Antichrist. There are three characters. There is the dragon, there is the beast, and then there's another beast, which we call, in other parts of Revelation, the false prophet. Three different individuals, okay? The dragon is Satan. You say, how do you know that? Revelation 12 identifies him, okay? The beast, now we're talking about in Revelation 13, verses 1 onward. The beast is the Antichrist. The Antichrist. The indwelt by the power of Satan. The person that is the, the one Satan has been waiting to unleash on the earth all along that's going to come and deceive the whole world. How? With the help of this third person. This is the false prophet. Now he, the beast, has, has you know, seven heads and ten horns. The false prophet comes in like a lamb, and he doesn't even have horns. He just has two little stump, stubs, you know, kind of like a little baby lamb that's just got the little prongs that start, you know, uh, the, the horns of a ram. So he looks weak. But actually, he is the greatest deceiver that's ever arrived on earth since the devil. And the false prophet and the beast, and the dragon, these three personalities dominate the book of Revelation and the events of the tribulation. Now, turn from 1 John with me back to Revelation 13. And let me show you each of these. So, in your Bible, Revelation 13, verse 1, And I stood on the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast. Right there he is, a beast. Uh, rising on the sea, having seven heads and ten horns. Very powerful, very strong. On his horn, ten crowns, and his head a blasphemous name. And he was like a leopard, verse 2. Uh, and his feet were like the feet of a bear, and his mouth was like the... So all this is talking about ferocious and dangerous and powerful. And then, keep going. It says, it was given in verse 7 to him to make war with the saints and overcome them. We're in the tribulation now. We're in the time when God has removed 
from the earth, the church, and the powerful restraint to evil that we are indwelt by the Holy Spirit. It's like there are all these walking around people that are indwelt. I, right now, as a normal, fallen, forgiven sinner, I have become the temple of the Holy Spirit. And if you're saved, if you know Jesus Christ, you are a temple of the Holy Spirit. And when we walk around, demons know that the Holy Spirit is within us. And people, lost people, sense there's something different about us. And we are a great and powerful restraint to evil that is going to be removed like control rods out of a nuclear reactor. And then Satan is unleashed. Then look what happens. Verse 8, all who dwell on earth will worship him whose names have not been written in the book of life. Now verse 11, here's the last person of the three that we're looking at. I saw another beast coming up out of the earth. He had two horns like a lamb and he spoke like a dragon. So he appears to be weak, but he's speaking in the power of the dragon of Satan. And he's indwelt by a very powerful demon that deceives the whole world. And look at verse 13. He performs great signs. He can make fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. He deceives them in verse 14. And he gives power to the, to the image of the beast. And look at verse 16. He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive the mark. So the false prophet makes everyone get the mark of the beast. Okay, back to the slides. Who or what is the Antichrist? The answer is 1 John 2, 18. The Antichrist is both the pervading spirit of the devil. Now look up for just a second. Let me tell you something. Did you know that Antichrists live all around you? I was taught by some Antichrists when I went to Michigan State University. One of my first professors at Michigan State in the 70s says, my goal is for you to not believe that the Bible is the word of God. It's mythology. That was, look over here, a small letter Antichrist, that teacher. So we live and work around, we're entertained on TV by, we are entertained by musicians, we're, we read books by people that are small letter antichrist. In other words, they don't believe that Jesus Christ is God in human flesh. They don't believe that Jesus rose from the dead, or they don't believe that, that he is truly God the Son. They just don't believe the truth. That's a small letter antichrist. But Coming is the capital letter, Antichrist. Now, why is that so important? Well, we're going to see it in a couple minutes, but let me tell you this. For those of you that are always tuning out, I see on YouTube how long you stay. Before you leave, let me tell you this. You can't get the mark of the beast until the beast is here, the Antichrist. Always we've had the spirit of Antichrist. We've had the world, the group of people, but the mark of the beast comes from a person in Revelation 13, 16. It's under the authority of the Antichrist, his false prophet forces people to get marked, either in the forehead or on their right hand. That means today you can't have the mark of the beast. That means today no vaccination. No vaccination, uh, no barcode, no social security number, no anything that's, that's right now being paraded as a potential mark of the beast is the mark of the beast until the beast is here. Okay, back to your sides. So that tells us that Satan's Superman is coming. He's talked about in the book of Daniel, and in our course we cover him. Also, he's described in the scriptures. He's a super genius, Daniel says, a super orator, this Antichrist, a super politician, he gets world peace, a super businessman. He, if you read chapter 18 of Revelation, he sets up one of the most profitable businesses in the world and everything flows to his capital city. He's a super general. It appears in chapter six of Revelation that he conquers without even battles. He's kind of like Hitler taking over Austria without firing a shot. But he's a super religious guru. He gets everyone to follow him. Next slide. Satan was the original Antichrist. 
So Satan is the prototype of this man coming. And Satan, John 8, 44, is a liar. Next, I want you to see the rise and fall of the Antichrist. He actually starts before the fall of man. He falls right here. Then he leads Adam and Eve into the fall in Genesis 3. So he was created perfectly. And we read about that in Isaiah 14 and Ezekiel 28. And then he fell sometime before Genesis 3. Actually, personally, I believe between Genesis 1 and 2, when Satan was, Lucifer was created perfect, and Genesis 3, right here, is where Satan fell. So Satan falls, and look what he does. This is the ascending kind of power grab of Satan. He gets humanity into his fall. Then he, he causes everyone but known as family to get defiled, so God has to destroy them in the flood. God wipes out the earth, starts the promised line, and in Genesis 11, Satan tries to confuse everything by getting everybody to be idolatrous at the Tower of Babel. Then Satan thinks he has his ultimate triumph. He, he gets Christ crucified, not realizing that was God's plan. And then, we're right here in the church age, right here, spreading the gospel. But Satan's next big move is right here, raising up the Antichrist that's in the first seal. Then Satan is cast out of heaven. That's yet a future event when Satan and all of his angels are not allowed to come before the presence of God. So Satan indwells a man. That's who we're talking about, the Antichrist. And the Antichrist wreaks havoc on the saints and on the world all the way through Revelation 19. And then the Antichrist and the false prophet are the first two humans to go to hell. Now look up. Revelation 13 introduces us to the beast and the false prophet indwelt by the dragon, which is Satan. That is the person of the Antichrist. So anytime... Before that moment in Revelation 13, you can't get the mark of the beast. Okay, next slide. These are just some of the ways Satan has shown up. He tried to corrupt Adam's line. Genesis 6, I told you, he tried to corrupt Abraham's seed. He sent the famine to get Israel out of the land. In Exodus 1, Pharaoh tried to kill all the males. Satan's trying to destroy God's plan. Pharaoh tries to kill all the children of Israel. And then they get into Canaan, and, and Satan incites even uh, against David's line. Uh, Jehoram kills all of his brothers, so there's not going to be an heir to the, to the line of David. The Arabians slew all the sons, uh, uh, except for Ahaziah of the king. Athaliah kills all the sons, but Joash, you see, there's all these attempts of Satan. Look at the last one, Haman right there tried to destroy all the Jews in Esther 3. Those are all the Old Testament attacks of Satan. In the New Testament, Satan doesn't stop. He makes Joseph not want to marry uh, Mary. Herod tries to kill all the male children. At Nazareth, they try and throw Jesus off the cliff. In Mark 4 and Luke 8, Satan tries to sink the boat with Jesus in it. And then finally, on the cross, Satan thought he won in John 19. But the ultimate is, in chapter 12, God says, enough. And he throws him out of heaven. Now remember, Jesus talked about the birth pangs, and I already mentioned this. They're going to grow stronger, closer, and become inescapable. All the end-of-the-world characteristics have this frequency, intensity, and visibility. That's where COVID-19 comes in. This is just one of the diseases that are going to get more frequent, intense, and global. Keep going in the slides. Deceptions are going to get stronger. That's why you need to know the Word of God. Diseases are going to get stronger and closer and inescapable, and so are disasters. Now, next question. Where is the mark of the beast in the Bible? We already read it. It's Revelation 13, 16. So the Bible does tell us when the mark of the beast comes around, and it's, it's actually well into the tribulation time. Next slide. 
It says in verse 16 of Revelation 13 that on their right hands are their foreheads. Now let me just show you a little bit of stuff we're getting very comfortable with. Right now, every camera looks at your eyes, your mouth, and this kind of triangle of your face. That's how my iPhone identifies people in every picture. We have other biometrics right here, our fingerprint. Uh, all of our fingerprint, our facial uh, triangulation, as well as our voice, as well as all the different biometric parts right down to our DNA. All of these are part of this 666 preparation. So look up from the slides for a second. Let me tell you something. Is the COVID-19 vaccine the mark of the beast? No. Repeat after me. Is the COVID vaccine the mark of the beast? No. But you know what it is? It's part of the stronger, closer, inescapable birth pangs of deception going on in the world of disasters all around us and of diseases with Satan in a human body, the beast, the Antichrist. How do you escape the mark of the beast? There's only one way. The only protection from Satan is God's signature. You see on this slide, we have to say, God, I'm forgiven. You remove my debts. I'm justified because I believe on Christ. When you believe on Christ, he gives us a new heart. I'm regenerated. I'm reconciled. I'm adopted into God's family. I'm redeemed. God owns me now. And he's making me a new person. That's the only protection. What I'd like to say to you is, if you'd like to join our class, we have two courses on YouTube I invite you to. Number one, Understanding Revelation, the 20 class study, that you're listening to the one little session of question and answer, and we teach through every verse and every doctrine and every truth in Revelation. Or another course that's even more encompassing is how to understand the Bible. We cover the whole Bible by looking at the 52 key chapters of the Bible. Those are just two of the courses we offer. And that course on Revelation is in a book. It's called Living Hope for the End of the Days. In fact, if you look up from the slides, it's right here. This is the entire course, Living Hope for the End of the Days. It's the whole book of Revelation. This book took 10 years for me to write. It's my dissertation from Dallas Theological Seminary. And this goes through every verse, every doctrine of the book of Revelation and ties it to all the rest of the books of the Bible. Real quickly, if you're just joining us, this is a Q&A. How does Revelation explain if the mark of the beast could be the vaccine? It's not. The mark of the beast is the mark of a person during the end of the world when the birth pangs are crescendoing, the world is deceived, diseases are killing, as Revelation says, one out of every uh, two people in the world, basically 40 some percent of the world dies in this very short time. And disasters are all around. It's not COVID-19, but COVID-19 is just one of the birth pangs. Should you get the vaccine? That's a medical decision that you should make. But you ask me if I'm going to get the vaccine? Mm -hmm. I have my mumps shot. I have my rubella shot. I have my tetanus shot. I have my polio shot. I get my flu shot every year. And Lord willing, Bonnie and I are in line to get both doses of the COVID-19 vaccine so we can continue being missionaries and traveling to all the nations of the world. Thank you for joining our Q&A. John Barnett here, my wonderful wife, Bonnie, doing all the recording here in the virtual classroom. Thanks for joining this Q&A. God bless you. <music>